Hi, and welcome to the next video in the Countess Shogun rigging series. In this one, we will be rigging the character's hand. Before we start, I just want to mention that this rig was inspired by the toy rig for Maya. I'll put a link in the description for the original video. Now, as usual, we will start by taking all of the bones we need and putting them into a separate layer so that they are easier to work with. So select all of the deformation and all of the temp finger bones and move them to an empty bone layer. As the next step, we will add a master finger control. To place it, snap the cursor to these two bones and add a new bone. Then select it, shift select the first bone in the middle finger and then press Ctrl Alt A to align the two bones. And then continue adjusting this bone so that it sits nicely between the middle and ring fingers. And rename it to fingers master control underscore L. And then we can parent it to the hand driver bone. We can also go ahead and give it a custom shape. Now with this shape it's easy to see that this control could be oriented a bit better. So I will switch into edit mode and using Control R I will adjust the bone's roll. By default the rotation mode for all new bones is set to Quaternion. And since it's much easier to work with Eulers, let's select all of the control bones and switch the rotation mode to XYZ Euler. Deselect the master control, make one of the other ones the active bone and press Ctrl F2 to batch rename. Data type the bones. In the find field type underscore L underscore temp and in the replace field underscore control underscore L. This will take all the temp bones and give them a proper name. Next we can attach all of the deformation bones to the controls. So start by selecting all of them and then in edit mode shift D to duplicate them, S to scale them and control alt S to thicken them up. And we will use Ctrl F2 again to batch rename all of these bones. Change the mode to set name, the method to prefix and name to buff dash. Press OK and then open the batch rename again, switch the mode to find replace, in find type dot zero zero one and replace nothing. This will just remove the dot zero zero one from all of these names. Next, let's parent each buffer to their control. I parent the first pair using Ctrl P and then I repeat the action for the rest using Shift R. Once that is done, we can constrain the deformation bones to their buffers. So switch back to pose mode, select one of the buffers, then one of the deformation bones and using Ctrl Shift C add a copy transformed constraint. And then repeat the action for the rest using Shift R. And with that, we could technically already animate the fingers using these controls. But we also have the master control, so let's continue working on that. The first fist shape will be driven with an animation, so let's switch to the animation workspace, change the mode to action editor and create a new action. Rename it to fingers underscore fist and press the shield icon to protect it. Before we start posing the hand, let's move the sword out of the way so we can have a better look at what we are doing. We can also go ahead and hide all of the finger temp and deformation bones. Just select them and press H on your keyboard. You can always unhide them by pressing Alt H. And then start working on the fingers and pose them into a nice hand shape. Make sure to look at the hand from all angles and don't rush this stage. And 
then you are done, select all of the finger controls and press I and put a keyframe on their rotation. And next we will work on the transition between the open and closed fist. Start by selecting the keyframes we just made, press G to move them and place them on frame 70. Then adjust the timeline to start at 0 and end at frame 70. Then place the cursor at frame 20 and press Alt R to reset the rotation of all of the finger controls. And then press I again to set another keyframe. Then switch the view from Dope Sheet to Graph Editor. Select all of the keyframes and press T and switch the interpolation to Linear. And then press Shift E and select Constant Extrapolation. This gives us a nice linear transition between the hand closing and opening. Now set another keyframe at frame 0. We can also switch back to the dope sheet, we don't need the graph editor anymore. And then you can adjust the fingers a bit to get a nicer shape. And when you're done, don't forget to set the keyframe again to save your changes. And then check what the motion looks like and make any adjustments if needed. I think mine looks fine, so I will move ahead. Now let's detach this action from our armature and press Alt R to reset the rotation of all finger controls. We can now add this action back to the fingers using an action constraint. To select the master finger control, then the start of the index finger and add an action constraint. And then go to the constraints tab. The target is fine as X location, we'll change the space to local space. Assign the action to be created in the action field. Change range min to minus two and range max to five. And then start frame is zero and end frame is 70. And now when we move the master control in the x-axis, it should play the animation that we created earlier. We can then select all of the other finger controls, then select the one that has the action constraint as the last one. Let's also give the constraint a nice name because we'll be adding more and it's nice to know which one does what. Then make sure you have the copy attributes add-on enabled and by pressing Ctrl C, copy bone constraints. And now the action should be playing on all the finger controls. Before we move on, I will just go into the side panel and lock all of the channels that we will not need for this control. Here I'm just checking which scale axis fits the finger spreading motion best. And the Z axis seems to be the best choice. Let's move on to the next hand shape. Start by selecting the master control and the start of the index finger and add a transformation constraint. Let's open up all of these panels, then change both spaces to local space. In the map to set the target to rotation and map from should be rotation as well. In map from, set the Y min to minus 45 and max to 45. And then in map two, set the Z source axis to be Y. And then change the min from 45 to max minus 45. Now, if you did things correctly, the finger should behave like this. Let's rename this constraint to offset and we can then copy it to the other fingers. So select the first bone in all fingers and then as the last one, select the bone we just created the constraint on. And then using Ctrl C, copy selected bone constraint and select the offset constraint. Then select the middle finger and change the map to to go between 15 and minus 15. For the ring finger, set the min to minus 15 and max to 15. And for the pinky, min is minus 45 and max is 45. And then for the thumb, 
change the X source axis to be Y as well and set X min to 10 and X max to minus 10. The Y can go between minus 5 and 5 and finally Z from minus 10 to 10. I came to these numbers just by experimenting with the control and finding a nice shape. And this wraps up the second hand motion. We'll start the next one the same way, select the master control, the start of the index finger and add a transformation constraint. Then change both spaces to local space. In the map front tab set Z min to minus 5 and max to 5. And then for map 2 switch the mode to rotation, the X source axis to be Z and the min to minus 45 and max to 45. And the finger should be doing something like this. Let's rename this constraint and call it lean. Then select the first bone in all of the other fingers. Then control C, select copy selected constraints, pick lean and press OK. And we don't actually need this constraint on the thumb, so let's go in and delete it. And now let's add the last hand shape. So again, select the master control, the start of the index finger and add a transformation constraint. We can already rename it, let's call it spread. Again, change spaces to local space. Switch map from to scale and set Z min to zero and max to two. We will map that to the rotation. Switch the X source axis to Z and set the min to minus 45 and max to 45. And the finger should be doing something like this. Now let's select the start of the other fingers and copy this constraint to them. And now we can adjust the constraint on the other fingers. So for the middle finger, change the map to to go from minus 15 to 15. The ring finger needs to lean in the other direction, so let's change it to 15 to minus 15. And lastly for the pinky, 45 to minus 45. And for the thumb, let's change the X min to minus 25 and max to 25. Switch the Y source axis to Z. Set the min again to minus 25, max to 25. And then the same for the Z axis, minus 25 and 25. And with that, we have finished the last hand shape. We can now go in and do a final check to see how all of the shapes work together. The nice thing about these constraints is that all of the motion is additive. So we can still go in and adjust all of the individual figure controls and everything that the master control does will work on top of that. And there you go, that wraps up the hand rig. We can now test it with the rest of the arm. And lastly, if you learned something from these videos and would like to see me make more, consider subscribing and maybe supporting me on one of the platforms listed below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.